how did all the members of Stained meet each other? And, and where did the idea uh, that maybe we should start a band together come from? Uh, okay, so <clears throat> I was in a band at the time and Mike was in a band at the time. And I think we were both kind of like, eh, you know, I want to do something else. You know, I want to like write some music. So um, uh, I'm, you know, I knew Mike first and we were just start our, our, you know, we wanted to get together and jam and that kind of thing. And we had just mentioned a singer, like, you know, does anyone, do you know a singer, you know, whatever. And he's like, you know, I, I met this guy really good. He was, uh, I met him at, he sang at a party and I got, we got to talking and this, that, and the other thing that ended up being Aaron. So, um, we had him come down. We all had a meeting at this, uh, uh, local watering hole back at home. And, um, we, uh, we kind of, that's where it started, really. That's where it all started. We had a different bass player at the time. Um, Pete McEwen, uh, rest in peace, Pete, uh, was our first bass player. And um, then Johnny came along. Johnny was in a killer band, killer band. And uh, he was kind of at the end of that thing as well. And um, uh, that's that's how it all kind of came together right there. When you, when you mentioned Johnny, it actually just brought back a memory. So that Quebec City show, I was front row. I was on on the uh, the the gate on the cage yep. on the barricade. That's it. And I was right in front of Johnny. And at one point in one of the songs, you know, I'm I'm bobbing my head to the beat, looking this way. He's bobbing his head to the beat that way. And at one point, we both locked eyes, both bobbing. And there was a <laughs> moment where he kind of like, "Hey, you acknowledge me?" And it's like he knows I exist. So anyway, yeah. that. That, yeah. that came to, to, to mind. Is, is it true that the original band name was Stain without the D and you yes. ran into trouble with another band having it? Yes. In fact, uh, there was a few bands that uh, have had that name. Uh, the guy, um, Lit is one of them. And uh, they used to be called Stain. And then there's um, this band back at home. They were called Stain as well. And they switched their name to Kilgore Smudge. I don't know if anyway, there's a little blast in the past for you. Uh, and we ended up throwing the D. How genius, you know? How how how, how insane is it? I mean, most bands never make it, like never become a household name. How insane is it that both Stained and Lit started with that same name and they both made it? I feel like I need to start a band named Stain and then quickly switch you it might. to something else. Yeah. That's the yeah. secret sauce. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Those guys actually live here in town. I run into them from time to time. That's awesome. I saw the singer. Is it Jay? Uh, yeah. I, yeah. The singer was uh, on a podcast recently uh, oh, as well okay. that I, that I checked out. Um, what's funny is since I became a fan of stain and stain became a household name as a band, whenever I see the actual spelling of the word stained with the E in it, it seems wrong to me. Like I've you you've ruined the actual spelling of stain for me. So. Same here. Same here. I'm yep. guilty of the same thing. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. Like uh, those places around here, stained glass or like anything like that. We see the E. I know. I do the same thing. Though. So you guys form the band together. Uh, you start playing live shows. You build kind of a cult following. You guys scrape together about twenty five hundred dollars to record your debut debut album, uh, uh, "Tormented." Mm. Is that the best twenty five hundred dollars you've ever spent? Best twenty five hundred I've ever spent, or we've ever spent? Yeah, probably, yeah, because it launched our career, um, and which uh, ended up in the hands of Fred Durst. And uh, at first, he didn't like the cover art. It's not that he didn't like the music. He just didn't like the cover art. It was like the religious undertones. There's like a rosemary yeah. or a, a Bible with a knife in it. or It was pretty crazy. Yeah. I don't know what we were thinking. It was uh, <laughs> me and Mike set it up. Mostly Mike did. But uh, um, yeah, man, it was it was pretty graphic. So, so I, I can understand Fred not liking it. Yeah, so he he liked the actual music on it. He just didn't like the album cover. And then rumor yeah. has it, it's once he saw you guys live, then he's like, okay, forget the album cover. There's yeah. something going on with this band. Yeah, we we came out. Uh, we got a a last minute cancellation uh, from this band, and we jumped on the bill because we used to trade off shows with this this band back at home. And they're like, oh, we can't, we can't, 
pull the whole band together to do the show or whatever. We're like, well, we got this. We'll do it. You know, and it ended up being Limp Biscuit, and the rest is history, I guess, with both bands. You know, and then with with Fred and and his you know business acumen, he's business savvy. He he helped to get the band signed to Flip Records. Is that the that's the history? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, he actually at that show, that particular show, he had uh, Jordan, who was his partner at the time in Flip Records. Uh, Jordan is, you know, the big guy. And, uh, you know, he's playing the music through the phone, through his phone. And Jordan's like, it sounds like crap coming through your phone, dude. You know, so. Uh, um, yeah, man, it, it, he fast tracked us to. um getting there a little quicker than some, so to speak. 